<coughs> Let's take a look at this guy. This, th this has to be fun, right? Go for it then. Tell me what happens. Subtract 10. So what do we have? Absolute value of 13 minus 2x equals negative 7. Now let, let's let's pause for a second. You guys could, this is what some students will do. They'll say this like, oh, okay, so 13 minus 2x equals negative 7. We've got to change the sign for the other one. Do do do. And they're going to come up with two answers, but we know something's wrong. What were you saying, Corey? It's undefined, no solution, or something. Yeah, cover, all, cover all the bases, <laughs> right? I'm not sure which one. Both sides, one. I could multiply both sides times negative one, but it just puts the negative in front of this guy. And that would mean the absolute value would not be isolated. What we have here is this. Check this out. The absolute value is supposed to return what? Positive. 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 How can the absolute value equal a negative? It can't. This doesn't even apply. Look at the property that we wrote. The property that we wrote was this. When that number, when this number right here is greater than zero, am I greater than zero? No. So this guy doesn't make any sense, and so the answer here is no solution. Now please do not think that you can just write no solution when you think a problem doesn't make sense. Okay. And it's no solution because it equals a negative number? Because it equals a negative, no, tell you what graph this. Let's see if I can get this on here right. If I solve this guy by graphing, uh, absolute value, where's the absolute value on here? Do you know? It's under your math menu. So press math and go to the right to the number. And the first option here is absolute value. So the absolute value of 13 minus 2x, close the parentheses, plus 10. That's one equation. And the other guy, I'm going to type in 3. Now when I do this, when I'm graphing each side of the equation, I'm looking for where these graphs, what? Intersect. Where they intersect. Now if I'm saying there's no solution, then what should happen when I graph these guys? They're not going to intersect. They shouldn't intersect. So let's see what we have here. I need to fix my window, right? Boy, I feel stupid. Well, I don't get the other guy, do I? Change your window. Notice that this guy right here is plus 10, so the absolute value, plus 10, so he's going to already be up. Let's go to y minimum to be 0 to 20. Let's see what happens there. This is my absolute value graph, right? I'm trying to see where this guy intersects y equals 3. Watch what happens. Where do these guys intersect? No. They don't intersect, do they? No. That's why we can say there is no solution here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What if I change this up a little bit? What if I said instead of being equal to 3, it was equal to 13? Will y equals 13 intersect this guy? Uh-huh. If this were 13 and I subtracted 10, yeah. I would get a positive value here and it would work out. And I would have two solutions if it were 13, right? Cool. Well, let's try one that maybe, hopefully, will not be a no solution guy. <coughs> Solve the absolute value of x plus 4 is equal to the absolute value of 7 minus 2x. Now according to the properties that I had before. A equals B or A equals negative B. Uh, let's look, it's at the very bottom here. You see this. The two absolute values are equal. What does that mean? The conclusion is that 
well, their insides are both equal, or their their ops one is equal to the opposite of the other. Okay. Now let's see what that means for us in this problem. So the first part means that the inside of one is equal to the inside of the other. That's what it means. Okay. Or what? Or the inside of one is equal to what? Negative. The negative of the other guy. That's what that statement says. And j j just so we can maybe get a better idea of what this means, suppose these guys were 10. Does the absolute value of 10 equal the absolute value of 10? <coughs> and doesn't the absolute value of 10 equal the absolute value of negative 10? Yes. So that's analogous to what we have here. So solve these guys. What am I going to do here for this first guy? No, notice, do this. Don't look at everything else. What do you see? It's just a linear equation, so shouldn't we be happy, Corey? Absolutely. I, absolutely. Excellent. Nice wordplay there. Move the 2x over so I get 3x equals what? 3x equals 3, which means x equals? Awesome blossom. Now, quickly check this to make sure everything is all right. 1 plus 4 is 5. 7 minus 2 is also 5. So that is true. That one works out. Over here, we get x plus 4 is equal to what? <coughs> Negative 7 plus 2x. I know some of you like to put the x on the left side. I'm not going to today. Move the x to the right. What do you get? X over here and 11 over there, right? So when you move these terms on the appropriate side, if you plug in 11, what's 11 plus 4? 15. 15. 7 minus 22 is what? So the absolute value of 15 equals the absolute value of negative 15, right? Cool. Now, if I were to graph these guys, how many intersection points should I have? Two. I should have two. Let's, let's just check that real quick. Let's do it over here. I don't know why I'm pressing. So I have the absolute value of x plus 4. And this other guy, I have the absolute value of 7 minus 2x. Now notice that my solutions are 1 and 11, right? Mm -hmm. That means my window is not going to be right. So change your window to be, <coughs> say, from 0 to 20. I think that's going to be a good window for us. And there we go. Now, what you don't see about this guy right here is that this is an absolute value equation. You guys should remember the shape is that V shape. And since it's x plus 4, what do you remember about how his graph looks? You were in my class. What? If you have y equals the absolute value of x plus 4, how does the plus 4 inside affect your graph? Mm -hmm. plus two the opposite. Left. Remember inside, um, horizontal opposite? So the vertex is shifted to the left four units. That's why you don't see the whole guy right there. See there that guy is. Here comes the other absolute value guy coming down. And so you see you have two intersection points. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. Now this is where, uh, the other day somebody griped at me about why do you have to put in a guess value? Well, check this out. If I want to do the intersection here just by looking at the graph, Second trace to get you to calculate menu. Option five to intersect. First curve is good, second curve is great. <coughs> now, if I don't do anything else for my guess, I just let it go. Right now it says x is five. Which of the solutions will it go to first? X equals one or x equals 11? It's one. It's gonna go to one. Isn't five closer to one? Yes. Oh, you surprised me here. 
Well, I feel foolish. What well, tells me x equals 11? So how do I find the other intersection point? I don't know. I just go to the table. <laughs> but what if it's not a whole number? I guess you both oh, you know. Can. You can. You can check it that way. But I'm saying if you do your second trace and intersect, first curve, second curve, your guess, well, I think it's close to zero. So find the one that's closest to zero and it tells me x equals one. So it gave me both of my solutions. Where else could you go to find the solutions to this equation? Where else could you go? The solver? Go to the solver. So if I go to math solver, I have the absolute value of x plus 4. Then I have to subtract away from that the absolute value of 7 minus 2x, we bring that over to the other side. So you wouldn't do the original equation here? Remember, when you Why use you the solver, the I'm sorry. when you use the solver feature, it has to be equal to 0. Oh, yeah, yeah. So to make this guy equal to 0, I move this over, and then minus it gives me x equals 1. Let's verify, let's make sure if I, d if I check negative 10 and solve that guy, it still tells me positive 1. If I type in 10 and solve close to 10, it tells me x equals 11. So again, both of my solutions are verified. Jess, what was your question? The second intersect point? Yep. How do you get to the second one? Yeah, I don't like it. Let's look at the graph. How do we get the other intersection point? Well, first, go to your calculate menu and intersect. Go ahead and hit enter twice to select those two graphs. What do you think this solution is right here? I think it's somewhere around 10. Let me guess and say x equals 10. And what that will do for your graphing calculator is that it's going to zero in in that area around x equals 10. So it makes it happen faster, that's all right. And it tells, yeah, it tells me x equals 11. All right. But to get this other one, this guy's closer to x equals 0 or 2. Or, I mean, I, I could type in 1, but I want you guys to see is I just need to get close to it. Now, I used to do this when I was a little kid. Oh, so let you me have just to go back to the you have to go back to the intersect menu. You can't do it from that point and just go to this tell it to give me the other point of intersection. Right. If, if I do it again from here, if I just hit enter three times, it still tells me eleven because that's the closest one that it sees because it tries to narrow down its what you know what it's looking at. Just like when whenever we see things, we may have peripheral vision, but the clarity of that peripheral vision is a lot lower than what we're directly looking at. Right? Yeah. I can look at you guys and I can see all of your details. But I may not be able to see what's going off on the sides here. I can see there's something over here, but the detail is a lot less. Very much like what you have here. So, in order for me to see that other intersection point, I wasn't paying attention. I have to be looking in that general direction, right? In order for me to see maybe what, what Michael, you know, what's on his shirt today. I have to actually look at him and now I can see. It's just, it's, it's just a black shirt. <laughs> so let me get close to my other intersection point, x equals zero, and it tells me, well, the closest solution there is x equals one. That's not what I asked you. So from, I'm, there, I'm sorry. from there, yeah. how do you go to the other, can you just stay in that same screen? You can't, I don't, that's I don't what, no. That's what I was there are a lot of there are computer programs and applications that will that will list all of those for you or you can go from one to the next. Graphic calculator won't do that.